Hello everyone, glad to be back. Today is 26th of April, now it's 12 o'clock, middle of the day by Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my first update for today in which I will share all the latest news that are making headlines in Russian media outlets and Russian language pages on different internet platforms. Second update will be later on in the late afternoon on uh, Patreon. I hope Patreon subscribers will find it interesting. And uh, yes, that's been said, let's talk about news now. I will start with Ukrainian special military operation, if I may. And the uh, first topic that I like to mention is about Hramove. After yesterday's update, many of you did uh, ask me questions about situation in Hramove because uh, some uh, big, big channels uh, did report that Hramov was uh, under Russian control, but I did not mention this topic yesterday because I did not have uh, any didn't have any confirmation that Hramov was under Russian control. So during the day I was uh, looking for additional information and uh, I did share everything on my Telegram channel, everything that I did find. But uh, in the late afternoon, Ria Novosti did report that uh, Hramov was uh, under Ukrainian control. So basically, at this moment, we can say that Hramova is not controlled by PMC Wagner units. But if we take a look, uh, this is Hramova. I'm calling it Hramova. Uh, so these small villages, Hramova here, and uh, look at these white dots. This is approximate line of contact between the sides so i believe uh, pmc wagner units are right next to the entry to this uh, village or maybe some forward units of pmc wagner already are inside the uh, hramova maybe but best we can say right now is that uh, hramova is contested but uh, unfortunately for russian side this settlement is not under full russian control yet it will be Definitely, it's only a matter of hours, maybe, maybe day or, day or two. But uh, for now, Hramove under Ukrainian control. When it comes to situation in Bakhmut, in this uh, small western po corner of Bakhmut, this small pocket that's still under Zelensky's control, we have information that Russian side did uh, conduct offensive operations to establish control over this military base here. I did predict this kind of uh, development and same time uh, PMC Wagner units are conducting offensive operations from uh, southeast side and um, I believe uh, PMC Wagner units uh, want to cut entire this area with the uh, military base and high-rise buildings from rest of the uh, territory that uh, under control of uh, Zelensky's regime and this way Basically, only what will be left under Zelensky's control is this, uh, these few high-rise buildings here and this uh, um, duchy area where some private housing is uh, based. And it will be much easier for Russian side, I believe, to establish control over the, this area. After this base, this military base and high-rise buildings in this uh, southern part of this pocket will be under full Russian control. But overall situation is uh, basically not really changed for Zelensky's regime. Uh, Bakhmut garnison is in desperate situation. Today we had reports that uh, head of uh, Ukraine's uh, special forces did uh, went to Bakhmut probably to, you know, uh, influence morale of uh, Ukrainian soldiers in in this area but I don't think he will be able to anyway uh, you know to anyway influence uh, Ukrainian uh, soldiers because uh, he will come and left in hours time and it's uh, Ukrainian soldiers are, that are uh, trapped trapped in this in this town and uh, are in hopeless basically situation so no matter who will visit Bakhmut and uh, what kind of statements will be made 
Bakhmut garnizon is done. Bakhmut garnizon is finished. They are no such a military unit, military organi organized uh, grouping of force uh, as Bakhmut garnizon. They are some uh, um, highly demoralized, poorly equipped, and poorly organized units of Ukrainian armed forces that are trapped in this area and uh, trying to survive. That's what, that's what it is really. So, I don't know how long it will take for uh, PMC Wagner units to establish full control over the Bakhmut, but, uh, you know, they are no rush. They will take all the necessary time to do the job with the minimal, minimal casualties. So, today, tomorrow, in a week or two weeks' time, Bakhmut eventually will be under Russian control, and not just Bakhmut, but uh, entire south uh, east part of Ukraine, from Kharkov to Odessa. So, there are no rush really. When it comes to overall situation on the front line, I will start with Kherson region because, uh, as you remember, yesterday I did uh, spoke about this Ukrainian operation to establish some bridgehead uh, in close vicinity from this Antonovka bridge uh, Antonovka bridge uh, next to uh, Aleshki settlement and uh, many telegram channels did report yesterday that Russian side did conduct uh, strikes from aviation from artillery to destroy those units and uh, I believe uh, Russian side was very much successful I believe Russian side was successful and uh, there is no bridgehead any Ukrainian bridgehead on the left bank of the um, Dnieper River. And just look at this terrain, man. What kind of bridgehead they're gonna establish here? This is marsh, man. Marsh area. This is swamp, basically. So that's why I said yesterday, man, even if a few soldiers of Zelensky's regime did manage to cross this river, what are they gonna do there? I mean, what? So, yes, when it comes to Zaporozhye region, it's a similar story. Artillery duels between the sides mainly, and Russia was yet again actively using its aviation. Donetsk direction, uh, also usual stuff, heavy fighting in direction of Marinka, in direction of Avdevka, Bakhmut is, of course, a uh, hot point, and uh, Seversk, of course and Seversk, and once the Russian side, as I said many times before, Rus once Russian side will establish full control over the Bakhmut, over the Chisovyar and Konstantinovka, and these towns will fail fairly soon after Bakhmut uh, under Russian control, then uh, Seversk will be definitely next, Seversk and Avdevka, and the uh, next hot point will be this last defense line that Zelensky's regime has, in uh, this area, it's a Kramatorsk Slavyansk defense line here. But, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe Ukraine's military uh, forces will collapse even before Russian side will reach Slavyansk Kramatorsk defense lines. And the uh, Ukrainian military infrastructure was hit in both these cities yesterday and this pro-ukrainian map is acknowledging this uh, yes no breakthroughs from anyone side it's a usual stuff Kherson region Zaporozhye region artillery duels uh, Donetsk direction is very active fighting close range fighting between the sides especially in direction of Marinka and in direction of uh, Avdevka Bakhmut is, of course, a major hot point on the front line and uh, Severs. There were some reports that Russian side also hit uh, Kupiansk, military infrastructure of Zelensky's regime in, in Kupiansk, and uh, I did show some uh, video footage on Telegram channels where um, some building was entirely destroyed, and according to reports, uh, this building was used by Ukrainian military as a short-time... Uh, base but uh, I did not see any additional information about casualties that uh, Zelensky's regime did receive uh, as a result of that strike 
Let's continue with some other news now, and this is Ria Novosti's report according to which um, United Kingdom uh, delivered to Ukraine not just promised uh, a Challenger 2 battle tanks, uh, but also shells for these tanks, including uh, shells with depleted uranium. Uh, this was stated uh, by Defense Ministry of UK yesterday. And um, according to this information, UK's uh, Defense Ministry uh, said that uh, they they will not monitor uh, when and where Zelensky's regime will use uh, their shells with depleted uranium and uh, UK don't think that they are obligated to uh, deal with the consequences of uh, usage of those shells. So basically what UK is saying is, I mean, it's up to Ukraine if they want to turn their land into poisonous area you know, let them do it. We don't care. That's what current UK's government is saying, basically. And, uh, of course, we are not surprised by this. But uh, this uh, attitude does show, shows uh, to everyone, basically, and to uh, Ukrainian citizens, first of all, that no one in the West truly cares about them. Just no one. And they have been used by Western elites. I'm, when I say no one, I mean elites. Of course, ordinary people, ordinary humans do care everywhere. But, uh, and after all, in Russia, more than 4 million refugees are from Ukraine. Many in the West don't even know about it. But that's what is happening. But when it comes to Western elites, man, they definitely don't care about uh, citizens of Ukraine. And that's why UK's defense ministry is saying, I mean, we did send them to these shells. We know these shells are poisonous, but we don't care because we are not obligated to take care of the consequences of usage of those shells. I mean, it's up to Zelensky's regime. So, yeah. London is saying that they are clear that they don't care. And Zelensky's regime will also don't care, of course. And by the way, Moscow did react. Moscow did react on uh, on this information, and um, we had statement from Russian the foreign ministry that uh, Zelensky's regime, with the help of UK, may turn uh, quite vast areas of Ukraine in a poisonous in a poisonous zone because uh, uh, depleted uranium, if uh, these uh, this ammunition was uh, after their usage was not found and not neutralized it will poison ground and ground water for uh, decades and decades so this has extremely poisonous ammunitions and uh, yes if Zelensky's regime will start using it then uh, quite vast areas of ukraine may get poisoned with uh, with some uh, isotopes that will be created by those shells. Let's continue now with some other news. And uh, this is Commerçant newspaper's report, which is uh, based on statements from John Kirby, White House uh, official. And uh, according to this information, White House now is uh, worried that after weather will improve in Ukraine, Russian side will start conducting some offensive operations. Uh, it's quite uh, strange. Uh, to listen to White House officials nowadays, not too strange, but it's quite difficult to take them seriously anymore because uh, very same people one day are saying one stuff and second day are saying something else. And next day they may say even different stuff because uh, before now we all knew that uh, White House was expecting Ukrainian counteroffensive, isn't it? There was so much talk about Ukrainian counteroffensive in the direction of Azov Sea, but uh, now we can uh, see with our, our own eyes that John Kirby, White House uh, official, is saying that after weather will improve, it's Russia that will conduct offensive operations. So there we go. Uh, when it comes to topic itself, uh, offensive operations, uh, by the way, uh, lately I'm more and more uh, doubting that the Zelensky's regime will be able to conduct a uh, counteroffensive, large scale counteroffensive in the direction of Azov Sea. I have some, uh, my reasoning 
to doubt uh, such possibility. Uh, and even though Western media outlets, uh, through their sources in Western elites, are reporting that uh, Zelensky's regime did has about 12 full-blooded brigades, battle-ready brigades, to conduct offensive operation, I still think this is not enough to, um, to uh, make such a move. And if we take uh, in account that uh, Western elites may want to disinf disinform Russian side, and maybe Zelensky has not 12, but 24, let's say, twice more uh, brigades, it's only still, it's only 80, 90,000 soldiers, even in that case. And this is, we are talking about last reserves of uh, Ukrainian armed forces, last more or less battle-ready reserves. And what they're going to uh, achieve with the 90,000 military personnel against Russia? In direction, in direction that Russia did prepare for exactly that, to, to repeal any possible counteroffensive from Zelensky's regime. They will achieve nothing. Russian side will decimate those brigades, man. No matter how many of, of them are, 12 brigades, 20 brigades, or whatever it is, Russian side will just decimate those brigades. And after that, we can count probably days before Zelensky will be out of office. Because I'm quite sure once uh, the so-called counteroffensive will fail, if it even take place, then Washington will try to distance itself from Zelensky and then White House will use and the uh, White House and the uh, Pentagon with CIA together will use uh, the assets in Ukraine, uh, like Budana, for example, head of Ukraine's uh, military intelligence, war criminal. They will use that kind of personalities, Budanov, Zaluzhny and the rest of the crap to conduct some regime change in Ukraine and remove Zelensky. I'm absolutely sure that this will be the case. And then, at that stage, we will probably see introduction of, uh, introduction of NATO member states to, the, to this conflict, especially, you know, first of all, Poland. And, you know, I did spoke about this possibility many times before. There's no need to re repeat myself, but Yes, when it comes to uh, offensive operations, uh, I, I truly doubt that Zelensky will be able to pull off large-scale counteroffensive in the direction of Zaporozhye. If Washington will not stop pushing Kiev to conduct this uh, offensive operation, then uh, Zelensky will have no choice and he will give order to military personnel to conduct operation, even if everyone knows that they will fail. But, uh, yes, I mean, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. But if Washington will uh, give Zelensky a choice, then uh, probably we will, there will be no Ukrainian counteroffensive whatsoever. And by the way, the fact that the uh, Russian side didn't evacuate people from, uh, from front line, line areas or big cities, let's say from uh, Melitopol, uh, also does mean something, isn't it? If Russian side was not sure that they will hold the line if uh, counteroffensive will take place, counteroffensive of Zelensky's regime, then I believe uh, civilians will be evacuated from this area. But because few civilians are there, maybe Moscow has some uh, better, not just maybe, but Moscow definitely has better knowledge than we do. And... Uh, that's one more indicator that uh, there, there may be no uh, counteroffensive for Zelensky's regime or if uh, Kyiv will conduct offensive operations, it will be just uh, local scale to, to show to Washington <coughs> that they are doing something, <coughs> really. And when it comes to Russian side, Russian offensive operations or decisive actions, I believe... Uh, Moscow will take it time, Moscow will wait, because uh, it's just too obvious that uh, Washington now has to decide when to remove Zelensky from the office. 
and how and uh, Moscow will just wait then uh, you know let's see who will become in, informally in charge of Ukraine uh, if they are negotiable people then Moscow may conduct some uh, talks with them if not then uh, I believe Russia will uh, conduct some decisive actions in the winter in the next winter And uh, if that's the case, then uh, you know Russia will reach uh, the Dnieper River from uh, Kharkov to Odessa. Entire southeast territory of uh, former Ukraine will become under full Russian control. And I believe uh, western parts of Ukraine will be come under control of uh, Hungary, Poland, uh, Romania, and maybe even Slovakia. But, you know, let me continue. 21 minutes, man. These videos are becoming too long. Though. So this is Ria Novosti's report. And uh, this is quite interesting. I did share this information also in my yesterday's second update on, on Patreon. Uh, we have we have a statement from Medvedev. And he said that basically this is first time, as I understand, that uh, high-ranking Russian official did mention possibility that western parts of ukraine may become a part of nato may become under control of uh, nato member states and he mentioned uh, specifically mentioned poland hungary and romania and he said that uh, if we have to choose between two bad choices one is uh, entire Ukraine is joining NATO and second is only western part of parts of Ukraine joining NATO then uh, second option is will be more preferable yet again if we had to choose fr from two bad options and uh, no matter how you're going to phrase it what M what Medvedev is saying basically is that uh, Moscow is considering such a development. This is a message for uh, Hungary, Poland and Romania. That Moscow considering such a possibility that uh, these countries may return some territories that uh, belong them before second used to belong them sec before second world war. And that this is quite a strong message really. From Medvedev and by the way he is not just former president of Russia he is uh, acting deputy chairman of Russian Security Council and possibly next president of Russia so that's what I was saying man once Zelensky's regime once Zelensky's regime will be removed from office or let's say once uh, once uh, this uh, anticipated by many counteroffensive will fail and Bakhmut will become under full Russian control and when Russia will start moving forward again um, I believe uh, Ukraine's military at that point will start uh, crumbling and uh, probably very same time we will see introduction to the battlefield uh, or to the Ukraine forces from uh, Poland and question is will Poland stop in on the western parts when they will establish control on the west or they will move further i think they will stop once they will establish control over the former polish territories then hungary will probably also send its forces in uh, transcarpathia region romania will act also and uh, you know as i said quite a few times before behind the curtains probably there will be some negotiations between uh, Moscow and uh, Warsaw, Moscow and Budapest, Moscow and Bucharest and uh, uh, sides probably will decide the um, future of uh, former Ukraine. And as I said, western parts will become part of uh, western neighbors of Ukraine. Eastern part, southeastern part will become part under control of Russia and eventually part of Russia and uh, to be honest for me one big question is what will 
happened with the Kiev and surrounding areas. Will uh, Western elites demand to keep uh, some kind of uh, quasi state on the name of Ukraine with capital Kiev, or maybe Russia will also establish control over the Kiev too? I don't know. It's hard to tell what will uh, be uh, what. How will sites negotiate future uh, for Kyiv itself and surrounding areas? But when it comes to Western parts, definitely will become a part of uh, Western neighbors of Ukraine. And when it comes to Southeastern part, definitely will become under full Russian control from Kharkiv to Odessa region. So that's my take on it. And uh, yes. For that time, when these kind of developments will take place, uh, Zelensky will be a long gunman, I believe. Let's continue. This is Ria Novosti's report, and uh, quite a strange story really happened um, happened yesterday and today. Because uh, late afternoon yesterday, we had um, information, and this is, by the way, Ria Novosti is reporting that... Uh, that uh, South African government may leave uh, international uh, may leave uh, international uh, criminal court. As you know, South Africa will hold a BRICS summit uh, fairly soon, and uh, Putin was invited, and Putin did accept invitation. And uh, I believe uh, decision has already been made that Putin will probably visit, participate uh, in 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 uh, this uh, summit. And to make sure that there will be no uh, misunderstandings, probably South African government did uh, consider to to leave uh, to leave um, international criminal court that uh, did uh, issue order on Putin's arrest uh, just a month ago, approximately. But but. Uh, Today we also had uh, another information according to which uh, administration of South Africa denied information that uh, they are planning to leave uh, ICC. So which one is? I mean, uh, I don't know really. But for me, at least, I mean, it seems logical that uh, South Africa will leave uh, will leave uh, international criminal court so that they will have no obligation to uh, do anything really when it comes to this court's decision decisions so let's see let's see there are some time left before BRICS summit will take place and uh, my guess is uh, that south africa will leave international criminal court or at least will uh, put some moratory on on its own uh, presence in this uh, in this court so let's continue and this is uh, quite interesting news also Rianovost is reporting that uh, uh, Shoigu did had a meeting with the defense ministers of Turkey Iran and uh, Syria during their visit in, in Moscow and I believe uh, during the negotiations they talked not just about Syria but uh, I believe they also did talk about uh, uh, South Caucasus uh, especially when it comes to relationships between uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan and uh, one should notice that uh, Turkey is a primarily partner, primarily supporter or main supporter of uh, Azerbaijan, militarily speaking. And uh, uh, Iran has a quite good relationship with Armenia, but quite uh, difficult relationships with Azerbaijan. And uh, Moscow, because Moscow don't need any, uh, any more... Uh, destabilization of South Caucasus region, especially South Caucasus region, I'm quite sure uh, Russian side was uh, um, highlighting 
necessity to keep stability in, in that region during these uh, negotiations. And also, of course, they will probably did talk about Syria lately. As you know, uh, Russian side and uh, China, also China play just huge role in, in this. Also, uh, did uh, manage to achieve quite uh, big success internationally when it comes to international stage and uh, leader of Syria, uh, Bashar Assad, had been invited by many Arab countries lately and uh, I believe uh, fairly soon maybe he will meet with uh, Erdogan, Tur president of Turkey also. So things are getting better for Syria. Things are getting better for Syria little by little, but Syria is returning to uh, Arab League and returning to a world stage also. And this is uh, uh, quite a success, really, of Russian diplomacy and uh, Chinese diplomacy. So that's a fact, really. Let's continue Ria Novosti's report here. And uh, this information is based on um, article in Global Times, I believe. This uh, media outlet is uh, one of the major ones in China, and, uh, and which one is specializes on foreign policy. And uh, Global Times did a right article about um, intention of G7 countries to impose uh, export ban on Russia so that uh, Western G7 countries and basically Western countries will be prohibited to export anything to or almost anything to Russia and uh, Global Times did write that this kind of action will be just suicidal for uh, West and this is true man this is absolutely true. Uh, if uh, Western states, uh, I mean, Western states have already been damaged by these uh, crazy actions of uh, the elites, but if they will now impose uh, export ban on Russia, it will uh, probably devastate many small and middle, I mean, average small businesses, let's say, especially small and uh, medium businesses of uh, G7 countries and Western countries as a whole because Russia is uh, playing huge role for, for, for those companies. Russian market has a huge meaning for them. And uh, I don't really know what G7 leaders are thinking, what is logic behind the uh, um, decisions but uh, you know, I, I should agree with the global times that uh, this kind of action from G7 if it will happen if they will truly impose uh, export ban on Russia then uh, probably hundreds and thousands of uh, small and medium companies in the West will be just devastated big companies can survive big corporations can survive because they are uh, uh, presented uh, in in entire world they will have some damage also but they will survive but for small businesses this kind of decision gonna be truly devastating let's continue and this is a uh, very important news because um, because uh, yesterday afternoon put it did, did sign order according to which russian side will uh, uh, let me translate this. Let me translate this to be exact. So, uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin signed a decree on the introduction of a temporary asset management on the persons from uh, on the persons from uh, unfriendly countries in response to the seizure of uh, or restrictions of uh, rights of Russian property abroad. So, in retaliatory terms, basically, 
as I understand, Russia will uh, establish uh, control over the Western assets in Russia. That's what this means, really. So as long as Western elites will try to uh, control Russian assets abroad in Western states, Russia will, you know, uh, will act exactly the same way and uh, will establish control over the uh, Western assets in uh, in Russia. And West do have some some quite large assets in Russia. Because Russia was a lucrative market for many Western companies and uh, Western investments. And uh, yes, they're going to feel it. And this is Ria Novosti's report. Uh, of course, you all know that uh, Biden did announce that he will uh, run for presidency. To be honest, uh, I mean, when, once I see this information, I was thinking, I mean, probably we can congratulate Republicans right now with the victory on next uh, presidential election uh, but um, when it comes to Biden himself uh, I, I truly don't understand how he, uh, how he gonna run uh, he, again for next presidential term terms because uh, I don't know man uh, I don't know maybe he will uh, you know participate in uh, presidential campaign and uh, then he will just uh, uh, he will just uh, leave leave campaign and uh, embrace uh, that's how say it endorse and then uh, he may endorse let's say Kennedy on final stages or something like that because I mean uh, even though I don't think that uh, neoliberals will be able to uh, maintain White House under their control with Biden or without. But, uh, I mean, Biden himself, he cannot be, he cannot take uh, four more years, man. He just cannot physically, he cannot physically cope with the uh, demands that uh, this job has. After all, he's, uh, I mean, talking with ghosts, man. And he's shaking hands with the ghosts, for God's sake, man. How, <laughs> how much damage uh, those neoliberals going to do to US, to US uh, uh, anymore? I mean, it, it's just, uh, it's not even funny no more, you know. I mean, it never was funny, really. Because we are talking about superpower, for God's sake. But in nuclear superpower. But it is what it is, man. And uh, yet again, uh, this is Ria Novosti. 38 minutes. Okay, a few more minutes and uh, I will wrap it up. For this update. Uh, yes, so Ria Novosti's report, according to which uh, Turkish um, head of Turkish uh, interior ministry, Suleyman Soylu, this person is very active lately. I don't know what is happening inside the Turkey itself, but this person is uh, very active because Russian media outlets almost, I don't know, on, on, on daily basis now reporting about statements that he made. So he said that uh, Turkey is in uh, kind of a conflict with the USA because uh, Turkey is fighting terrorism. So, you know, according to Turkish interior minister, Turkey is uh, fighting terrorism and because U.S. is not, uh, or because U.S. is supporting terrorists, uh, you know, Turkey are now in uh, indirect confrontation with, uh, with USA. And of course, we all understand that uh, primarily uh, Suleyman Soylu is talking about uh, uh, Kurdish People's Party, that's name, uh, Kurdish uh, political and military organizations that are active inside the Turkey, in uh, Iraq and in um, Syria. But, uh, you know, we can also say that uh, 
U.S. is supporting not just, not just Kurdish uh, paramilitary groups. U.S. did create uh, ISIS for God's sake. It's, it's U.S. secret services with uh, together with uh, U.K.'s MI6 that create ISIS. And they create uh, Al-Qaeda. All the major terrorist groups were under direct or indirect control of uh, U.S. and uh, U.K. So, of course, of course, they are supporting terrorists and they are uh, using terrorism as a tool, of course. So, yes, I mean, uh, Turkish interior minister is uh, absolutely right. Absolutely right. And uh, I don't know, do Russia recognize Kurdish organizations as a terrorist ones or not? But uh, but uh, Turkey does, and U.S. truly does support uh, Kurdish paramilitary groups uh, also. And few more news. This is Ria Novosti's report. You're gonna be surprised, man. Probably. But this is Ria Novosti's report, according to which uh, 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 Riga in Riga, Munici. Municipal uh, powers of Riga decided to demolish to demolish uh, monument of Pushkin if, in, in one of the square. That's a Latvian government, isn't it? I always uh, confuse Lithuania and Latvia. Riga is Latvian government. Yes, Riga is Latvian government. It's funny, but I truly, you know, sometimes I do confuse uh, Lithuania and Latvia. So that's a news, man. That's how crazy, how, how much Russophobic they are. That they are now demolishing monuments for uh, Pushkin. And reasoning is that Pushkin is represents Russian imperialism. When Pushkin himself was in quite a bad uh, terms with uh, with Russian um, emperor during his lifetime, and you know, I mean, the, come on, man, come on, man, this is madness. This is madness, man. So Latvian elites, that's that's a face of Latvian elites, man. They are demolishing monuments for Pushkin. And what they gonna do after this, man? I mean, what? As I said yesterday, man, they are trying to bring some attention to themselves. And uh, they are, I mean, all they can is to be more and more Russophobic in their actions. And they are reaching some uh, super, super level of stupidity. And that's what uh, this is really, I mean, demolishing monuments of uh, Pushkin, really. So, yes, this is it. This is it for now. There are quite a few uh, more news, but um, this video is uh, already too long. So I hope you will find uh, this update interesting. And uh, if so, please... Uh, Hit that like button, leave some commentary about any topic you like. And if you can, please uh, share links to my videos or my channel with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Telegram, or any other platform that you are active on. And uh, if you think this channel is interesting, useful, and deserves to exist, please consider to support with small donations through PayPal, buy me coffee, or by subscribing to my Patreon page you will see links under this video in the description box this is it for now have a great day and take care